Chapter 10, Impedance Relaying. Distance relays are double actuating quantity relays with one coil, the restraining coil, energized by voltage, which by virtue of a factor that's connected to a PT or a, a VT, is proportional to the line voltage at the relay location. The other coil, the operating coil, is energized by current, again proportional due to the fact that it's connected to a CT, to the line current at the relay location. The torque to operate the relay may be described by the fraction I over V, or the current over the voltage. As the current increases, the relay will tend to operate. As the voltage increases, the relay will tend to restrain. Now, I over V, which according to Ohm's law, is equal to 1 over Z, where Z is the impedance of the circuit which is drawing the current I driven by the voltage V. In this case, the voltage to operate the relay is governed by the current feeding the fault on the line. The limiting factor on the amount of fault current flowing for a given line voltage is the impedance of the line. The closer to the station the fault is, the less line impedance, the higher the fault current is, and the greater operation torque on the relay. In fact, assuming that the impedance of the line is uniform, the impedance measured to the fault is proportional to the distance to the fault. Hence, such protection is called impedance protection or distance protection. The protected zone is not exact, but it's good enough to provide adequate high-speed protection, especially when combined with multiple zones and high-speed end-to-end communication signaling. Also, one of the problems with this simplistic setup as described here, the relay does not know what direction that the current is flowing. It operates solely on the magnitude of the current and will operate for faults in the opposite direction looking back into the bus. This is called the characteristic of the relay, which can be altered to give more favorable results as we shall see. Distance protection is a very widely used protection scheme in the transmission lines. The RX diagram is useful in plotting the characteristics of distance relays. Remember that reactance is plotted vertically and resistance is plotted horizontally. Any resistance is represented by a vector of magnitude z. At a set angle, we'll call it theta, from the vertical axis. The three variables, voltage, current, and the phase angle between them, can be converted and plotted on an Rx diagram because V over I is equal to Z, and if you can plot Z, then you can plot V over I. Impedance Z is defined as the ratio of RMS value of voltage and Z is equal to V over I, which is equal to resistance plus reactance, and they can be plotted on an Rx diagram. R, remember, is the impedance Z times cosine of the angle. X is equal to the impedance times the sine of that angle. Theta is positive if I lags V, and it's negative if I leads V. Thus, V and I can be converted on an Rx diagram as shown here. The family of impedance relays or distance relays can offer a wide range of characteristics, which we're about to look at. Relays which measure plain impedance, Z, are called impedance relays. The characteristics on an Rx plane is a circle with the center at the origin and a radius as Z. 
Relays which measure impedance but respond to faults on one direction only are called directional impedance relays. The characteristic of this circle here is not a directional relay. It'll operate for any impedance inside the circle, as we'll see in the next slide. The impedance relay operating characteristics is a circle represented on an RX diagram. Operations, in other words, when the relay picks up, it will pick up for any combination of voltage and current, V over I, or the impedance on, a, on this RX diagram that falls inside the shaded area, the relay will pick up. Anything that is the voltage ratio of V over I that falls outside this circle, the relay will restrain. So the characteristics that we say, the relay is a circle with a center of the origin on an RX diagram, and any impedance measured inside that circle will operate the relay. Now, if we plot a line on the RX diagram, it will look like this. As the line extends down to the other end, it will produce a straight line on the RX diagram, starting at the origin and ex extending upwards to the right. So any fault along the line should operate the impedance relay because of the characteristics of the relay. There are some disadvantages to this relay. This relay definitely will pick, will protect that line. However, this relay, as you can see, is non-directional. In other words, it can look in the other direction towards the bus and out other lines. So it is not a completely exclusive type relay. It will trip for faults in the line, Unfortunately, it'll trip for other faults that are not on the line. In other words, it responds to faults on both sides of the CT and the VT. And it can't discriminate between internal and external faults readily for all cases. And it's also affected by the resistance of the fault itself. So the line does extend as a straight line, but if we add the impedance of the fault, say it's an arc fault or a tree, then that has to be added to the impedance and it could very well fall outside the protected zone and the relay may not operate. It is also very sensitive to power swings. Uh, as a large area is covered in the circle of the RX plane, uh, as the system goes through a, a power swing, which would happen during, uh, say, storm conditions, the relay has a ten tendency to be very sensitive, and it could operate. In order to mitigate these problems, the MO-type distance relay was developed, also known as admit the admittance relay. And sometimes it's even called an angle impedance relay. Through various techniques, the mole relay characteristics shifts the impedance of the circle on the RX diagram along the line uh, for which it is being for which it is protecting. Now, in the old school days, and there's still a lot of these relays out in the system, such as the KD4 and the KD relay, the Western Coast KD relay, this shifting was done using various um, magnetic and capacitive effects inside the, trend, or the relay itself. In the more modern relays, they can change the characteristics uh, with mathematical algorithms because it is a digital relay and they have the luxury of doing that. However, the MO characteristic uh, is very convenient because it doesn't, isn't just restricted to the narrow impedance of the line, which may prevent it from 
tripping if it was too uh, if the characteristic was too narrow by providing a circle with the maximum torque and we'll talk about that in a few minutes uh, along the line this tends to give uh, a really good coverage of the line especially if we're talking about multiple zones and uh, communications uh, end to end so that you can differentiate for internal and external faults. However, we're going to talk about the mole relay and then we'll look at uh, the KD uh, relay and then we'll have a quick look at some of the more modern IED relays that can actually change the characteristics quite drastically from the actual mole relay itself. For now, let's assume that the characteristic of a relay uh, in this case has been shifted from the origin so that it is passing through the circle passes through the origin and the diameter is actually the diameter of the line. The characteristic is directional now. It will operate for faults in only one direction or we should say along the line or in the vicinity of the line. It doesn't react to uh, faults in the opposite direction. So this is a very improved characteristic of the line. The operating torque is dependent on where inside the fault uh, or inside the circle the fault occurs with the maximum torque being at the very point as to where the line crosses the circle on the other uh, away from the origin. Mole relays usually have multiple characteristics that simultaneously measure the impedances uh, in, in the system and along the line. In most cases, one element is set to reach 80% of the line, and this is called zone 1. A second element is set up to reach 120% of the line, and this is called zone 2. Another element is set to reach in the opposite direction, and it is called zone 3. Now, all of these zones are used to feed into tripping logic, and some of them are permissive overreach, some of them are called permissive underreach, some of them are called directional comparison, but the fact that you've got three zones now, you can switch the logic after the fact that they've done their measurement and either picked up or not picked up in order to protect the line. And we'll see that in uh, subsequent slides as we go along. The important thing to note here is that one relay can have several zones, and those zones characteristics can be various sizes, lengths, and directional measurement. Let's talk about zones of protection now. A common practice is to divide the power system up into zones, or the line up into zones, if you would, uh, for protection purposes. If a fault occurs anywhere within the zone, the system components within that zone will work to isolate the, fall, the, the fault in a certain way. A zone is defined as the area from a current transformer on the line that is connected to one particular distance relay. And it is extended, the zone is extended out to a defined reach along the line. It could be 80%, 90%, or 120%, or any of the in-between uh, fractions as well. In transmission line protection, it is common to use an underreaching zone, we'll call it zone one, and an overreaching zone, zone two. A third zone, as we mentioned before, is also used in the reverse direction, but we're not going to look at that right now. We'll look at it a little bit later. Shown here is an example of 
two defined zones of protection on the line protected by relay A. And you can see it here that it, uh, it is bound by the location of the CT that is connected to relay A at station A. And it extends out around 80% or 90% of the line, and we call that zone 1. Zone 2 can be also defined. The area that it's protecting is 120% of the line. It originates from bus A, where the CT is connected to relay A, and extends out along the line and will reach past the second station uh, because it's reaching 120% of the line. So we define these two zones as zones of protection. The relay, relay A, will operate for zone 1 and zone 2. What we do with those operations after the fact is the logic that we're going to talk about later, but for now we're just going to define those zones and that the relay will operate in those particular zones. The same setup is uh, working on the other end of the line at the other station. The zones of protection there are defined by the CT that is connected to relay B and it has two zones of operation as well which reach 80 to 90 percent for zone 1 going in the opposite direction and zone 2 120 percent which reach, reaches into the other station of course uh, in a similar fashion. So far we've only uh, discussed the fact that the impedance relay is looking at the line and it actually has two zones of protection it's called zone one and a zone two protection. Zone one uh, protects or looks at only a part of the line. Zone two looks at more than a hundred percent of the line. What we do afterwards with the logical tripping sequences is what characterizes the various types of relay protection uh, that you will employ to protect a line. So let's look at what they call permissive overreach transfer trip or POTT. Z1 is still looking at 80 to 90 percent of the line impedance. It underreaches the remote end but does not have any time delay so we're going to set it tripping sequence to trip without any time delay or instantaneously for any fault within its zone of protection which is zone 1 which covers 80 to 90 percent of the line. Zone 2 is set to protect 120 percent of the transmission line. Zone 2 covers all of the line including zone 1's reach and overreaches the remote end. A time delay of 15 to 30 cycles or 250 to 500 milliseconds is set to initiate a trip if a fault is detected anywhere within its zone. This tripping logic is set up for the other end as well. So you have relay B looking in the other direction. It has zone 1, it has zone 2. Zone 1 is set to trip instantaneously. Zone 2 has a delay trip of 250 to 500 milliseconds. The protection zones for relay A and B start from bus A and B respectively. Two zones of protection have been defined for each relay, zone 1, zone 2. Zone 1 is set to protect 80 to 90 percent of the transmission line and zone 2 is set to protect 120 percent of the transmission line. Relay A 
looks forward to bus B and relay B looks forward to bus A. The circuit breakers 1 and 2 are governed by relay A and relay B respectively. So you have this functionality where you have two zones of protection looking at the line. One zone is instantaneous, the other has a time delay. In our simple setup here, I've said that uh, circuit breakers 1 and 2 are governed by relays A and B respectively, which means that each end looks after tripping its own end and protecting the line uh, by doing this. Let's assume for a moment that zone 1 protection at the B end is removed. Let's say something's wrong, it doesn't work. What I've just removed it from the logic here. So we have two zone twos looking at the line plus zone one looking at the line from the relay A. If we apply a fault or if a fault were to uh, exist or happen at this point on the line both zone twos will see the fault and clear it in 500 milliseconds. I've diagrammed the logic here and I've exaggerated the time delay of course just for clarity purposes. You can see that zone two will initiate a timer. The timer will then go and permit the breaker to trip after 500 milliseconds at each of the respective ends. In systems of ever-increasing transmission voltage, 250 kV, 345, 500, 735 kV, etc., it becomes imperative that the faults are cleared even faster in zone two. In fact, we like them to trip almost instantaneously. Instantaneous clearing of zone 2 can be accomplished with the help of high-speed communication links such as a microwave uh, transmitter and receiver at both ends. Let's have a look at how that will work. Permissive overreach transfer tripping employs high-speed end-to-end communications. Permissive overreach transfer tripping is a specialized protection scheme used to provide high-speed tripping for faults anywhere along a high-voltage transmission line. In the permissive overreach scheme, communication intelligence is used between the two terminal stations in order to determine the location of the system fault. As you can see from the diagram, the logic at each end now includes a transmit function, Tx, as well as a receive function, Rx. Each zone will still initiate a 400 millisecond delay trip at their respective ends. However, the 400 millisecond time delay is bypassed in trips at high speed if a permissive tone is received from the other end. Let's have a look at how that works. Let's apply a fault FL1 on the line in between station A and station B, but just beyond station A's zone one protection. Remember now we have removed zone one from station B, just so we can see how this permissive zone two protection works. At A, the underreaching zone one relay does not see the fault and therefore does not operate. The overreaching zone two relays at both station A and B will see the fault and they'll they will initiate three things. One, they will begin the timer as before and that will trip the local breakers after 400 milliseconds. However, each relay will also operate to key a transmitter TX to send a permissive tone to the other station. Both stations will initiate instantaneous local tripping that will happen only if after receiving a permissive tone from the other station. 
Therefore, the overreaching Zone 2 relays at each station A and B will bypass the 400 millisecond time delay to trip its local line terminal breakers at high speed via permissive receive signal RX. As a result, system fault FL1 on our high voltage line L1 is cleared at high speed or you might say it's cleared instantaneously. So you can see that even though it's only zone 2 uh, fault being sensed at either end, we still get instantaneous or high speed tripping due to the communications back and forth from one end to the other. If we apply a fault this time at FL2, which is beyond the remote station B, the underreaching zone 1 relaying at station A does not see the fault and will not operate. The more sensitive overreaching zone 2 relaying, however, will see the external fault and will operate. Station A will not trip instanta instantaneously as the permissive receive tone RX is not received from station B relaying. The station B relaying does not key the TX permissive send transmitter because it will not detect the fault as it is located behind terminal uh, at station B. As a result, the instantaneous tripping of station A does not occur as for the external fault FL2. Thus, in a permissive overreach, overreaching scheme, it is possible to have high-speed tripping at 100% protection coverage for all internal faults and not over-trip for external faults. In directional comparison protection, an added step of security is added to the system in that for faults that are outside our system of protection we want to ensure that the line will not trip high speed so we send out a uh, blocking uh, signal and you can see we've added zone 3 logic to our tripping uh, system here where zone 3 will actually open the instantaneous tripping of the line for permissive overreach if the fault is in zone 3 and we do not want the line to trip if the fault is in zone 3 and we certainly don't want it to trip instantaneously anyway. The directional comparison scheme incorporates, as I said, a third zone of protection and a second transmitted signal. As in the permissive overreach scheme, we have two zones of protection. Zone 1, which covers 80% of the line. Zone 2, which covers 125% of the line. Station A, distance relay, look into the direction towards station B and station B distance relay looks towards station A. Both terminal stations have a third zone, zone 3, which look in the opposite directions. There is a third element of the distance relay that operates for faults behind the terminal station. As in the permissive overreaching scheme, communication intelligence between the local and the remote station is employed to communicate the location of the system fault. In this protection scheme, the blocking tone, which is indicated in green, is sent to the other station in the event the external fault occurs behind the terminal. The zone three fault detecting relays operate for faults in the opposite direction of the protected line to key a transmit uh, transmitter equipment which block zone 2 high speed output via the block receive RX contacts. This will reassure no instantaneous tripping for a fault outside the zone of protection. The type 
the Westinghouse KD relay is a polyphase compensator type relay which provides a single zone of phase protection and for three phase fault conditions. It provides instantaneous tripping for all combinations of phase to phase faults, two phase to ground faults, and three phase faults. Now the KD relay, in this case the KD4 relay, is an old school relay. Uh, it's been around for some time and there's still a lot of them in existence today. So I thought I would show you this uh, just so you'd be familiar with the, with the relay. If for more details, the relay manual will have to be consulted. These relays are slowly being replaced by the more modern uh, intel intelligent electrical devices, the IED type relay, which we'll show you an example of in, uh, in the next few slides. This shows how the KD relay is connected. One relay for each zone of protection, zone one, zone two, and zone three. You'll notice that the current uh, coils for zone three relay, relay, zone three relay, the current uh, connections are reversed. And this essentially provides the reverse looking quality that you want for your zone three relay. Both zone two and zone three have auxiliary timing circuits, which you see here in the DC logic. Okay, as promised, uh, here is an example of uh, in an intelligent electrical device or a solid state relay that is on the market today and, and in service. This one uh, is a a product of GE. It's called their Multilin D60. Uh, there's other companies out there such as Siemens and SEL that have equally if not better uh, relays but I, I thought I would just show this one as an example to see the more modern type of relays that are available and these relays are basically small measuring devices with uh, inboard computers that do a whole lot more than just do the uh, impedance type measurements that the uh, the old school relays provide. Anyway, this is the Multilin multi -lin D60. It's a line distance protection system, high speed transmission line protection with single phase and three pole tripping and reclosing uh, capabilities. Its applications are for overhead lines and underground cables, even if there's different voltage levels. Single and dual breaker circuits requiring single and or three uh, pole auto reclosing and independent synchro checks on reclosing. Circuits with in-zone power transformers or tapped transformer feeders can be included in uh, this application and it'll also provide a backup protection of sorts for generators and transformers and reactors that are on the line as well. More specifically, these are the individual functions of the relay that you can see listed here. This relay is capable of the following functions if they are selected and they can be selected or not selected depending on the uh, preferences of the utility that's uh, maintaining this relay. It has a 21G or a ground distance uh, element. It has 21P for phase distance, synchro uh, synchronism for synchro check relays on reclosing, phase under voltage, auxiliary under voltage, reverse power, thermal overload, breaker failure protection, Current disturbance, current disturbance detection, um, which is event recording, recording triggered, uh, ground instantaneous overcurrent protection, neutral instantaneous overcurrent protection, phase instantaneous overcurrent protection, negative sequence instantaneous overcurrent protection, ground time overcurrent, neutral time overcurrent, phase time overcurrent, negative sequence time overcurrent, circuit breaker, AC circuit breaker, monitoring, compensated over voltage, 
Uh, this has to do with the Ferranti effect, which I'm not going to go into detail here, but uh, basically it compensates for the current using to charge the line on medium, uh, medium length uh, uh, feeder lines. It also has neutral over voltage protection, phase over voltage protection, auxiliary over voltage protection, negative sequence over voltage, and neutral directional overcurrent. So this relay is really a system rather than described as just one relay. It does a myriad of things, which is good because you can dial them in or dial them out as needed. Besides providing all those protection functions, because the relay is a highly accurate measuring device, it also has a built-in fault locator. The integrated fault locator provides distance to the fault in kilometers or in miles, parallel line zero sequence current compensation and load current compensation enable the D60 to provide improved accuracy for fault distance measurements. It has single pole tripping as well as reclosing. It has communication aided schemes. The D60 supports different teleprotection functions for fast fault clearance of any faults within the protected line. The following types of pilot aided schemes, which pilot aided just means that they're communicating with each other over a distance, uh, these are available in the D60. Direct underreaching transfer trip, permissive underreach transfer trip, provides two permissive overreach transfer trip functions. Hybrid permissive overreach transfer tripping. Directional uh, comparison blocking scheme. Directional comparison unblocking scheme. And custom, uh, a customable version of the permissive, over over, uh, permissive overreach transfer trip and the DCB schemes. So it provides many, many functions in the way of communications. Again, they are selectable. You can choose to dial them in or dial them out. The D60 also provides multi-shot auto reclosing up to four shots for single or three pole, three pole auto reclosing on all types of faults with independently programmable dead end time for each shot. Now most companies, in at least in North America, uh, usually use uh, three, uh, three pole tripping and reclosing, although single pole tripping is available with this relay and you can use it. Additional features of this relay include monitoring and metering. The D60 includes high accuracy metering and recording for all AC signals, voltage, current, power metering, uh, all of this is built into the relay. Current and voltage parameters are available in total RMS magnitude or fundamental frequency magnitude and angle. Remember this relay is more than just a relay, it has a built-in uh, computer basically which is capable of providing uh, readings in any format that you want. It also has fault and disturbance recording capability. It will do sequence of events. It's a oscillography. Uh, use uh, we record up to 64 digital and up to 40 analog channels uh, with events up to 45 seconds in length. It's also a data logger for disturbance recordings, 16 channels, up to one sample cycle per channel. And it has a sophisticated fault reporting system uh, to provide a summary of uh, fault reporting uh, 
as required. It also has uh, health diagnostics built into it. So it will check itself out at the beginning or at the startup. It will continually check uh, connections and logics that's in the system and it will report any kind of uh, problem that would crop up uh, via a SCADA or a communication uh, connected system. The communication system, uh, the D60 provides for secure remote data and engineering access, making it easy and flexible to use and integrate into new and existing infrastructures. Fiber optic ethernet provides high bandwidth communications, allowing uh, low latency controls and high, high speed file transfers of relay fault and event recording information. The D60 supports most popular industrial standard protocols that are required out there. And this is just a shot of how the relay is connected to the system. Um, before, you, in the old school relays, you had to be careful of uh, the connections and whether you had line to ground and face to neutral and all the rest of it, uh, connections per uh, per relay and per relay zone. Uh, all of that has been eliminated in these newer type relays. Essentially what you do is connect up a three phase set of voltages from your VTs or CVTs and you connect up your current sources that are required and then the, you use a computer to dial up the various functions and the, and the relay itself deals with all three phases and mixes them and matches them and provides the protection that you require through uh, digital techniques. You can connect to this relay with a computer running the provided software, which they call the EnerVista UR setup software. And you can do that locally with a laptop computer through the front panel RS-232 port that is uh, on the relay. Or you can actually access uh, the computer, or sorry, you can access the relay remotely via a modem connected to the RS-485 or Ethernet uh, port on the rear panel of this relay. So I hope this did not sound like a sales pitch for uh, this type of, or, or this relay. Um, it is provided by GE and uh, there are equally, if not better, uh, relays that are out there that are provided by Siemens or provided by SEL. Um, I happen to select this one just as an example, just as I selected the old school KD relay as an example just to let you know what is out there and what the capabilities are. For further details, uh, I encourage you to contact the manufacturers and the manufacturers' data on their various products that are out there. However, this will give you a good overview of what uh, impedance or distance type relay is. And uh, this ends chapter 10.